Is Spider-Man worth it on PC? Fuck yeah. Is it worth it on PC if you're a PlayStation 5 owner and you have it on that platform? I think that really depends on you. If you want to consolidate your library on one particular platform, that's the reason why I did it, as well as I have a gaming addiction. I'm horribly irresponsible with my money, and I need professional help. I say that because that now technically means I'm safe in today's society because I just admitted to you I do have a disability. Which means you can't talk shit when I admit that I've actually bought Spider-Man three times. And I don't regret it a single time. The first time was all the way when it initially released in 2018 on the PlayStation 4. The next time, I think it was a couple months ago, where they quote unquote remastered it for the PlayStation 5. And then I just recently bought it on PC. Playing this game off and on for the last four years, buying it on technically three different platforms, continuously playing the story and seeing the game look and play better and better as the hardware improved. I gotta say, if you're a PC player and you've never had the opportunity to play this game, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not a Spider Man fan, I'm not huge into superhero stuff myself. The comic books, the movies are cool to watch every now and again, but I'm not deep in it. And as far as superhero games go, the only ones that were ever done phenomenally well and highly respected was Rocksteady's Arkham games. And I would say without a doubt, Insomniac Spider-Man games are right up there, right next to Rocksteady's work. Sure, there's definitely some things that can improve and elaborate on in the next Spider-Man game, but for a first crack at it, I think they did a pretty damn good job. But all in all, in the 10 to 15 hours I played in the PC port, I completely beat the story. It looks like it's the exact same version of the PlayStation 5. All the DLCs here, New Game Plus is set and ready to go, all the extra suits that they added for free over the PlayStation 4 version's life is all there as well. It's the entire package that you get from the PlayStation 5 version. And they nailed it. The game is amazing, with the exception of one thing. And that's even after the beefy day one patch that still has frame rate issues. I'm hoping that as we start seeing more Sony exclusives get brought over to PC, these rough launches are ironed out a little better. God of War had frame rate and lag issues. Horizon Zero Dawn was damn damn near unplayable for a lot of people for I want to say a solid month after its launch. Spider-Man is nowhere to that degree, but it does have its moments. And I should say that I am playing on a very beefy rig. I have a 3080, 32 gigs of RAM, and a Ryzen 7 3700X. And swinging through the city, I would have random dips. I want to say one more update and it should be perfectly fine. It's not completely unplayable, although it was definitely noticeable and something that I feel is worth mentioning. But the game's only been out for a couple days now. I'm sure we'll end up seeing that second update very soon that it will hopefully improve the experience for everyone across the board. And I think as time progresses, Sony's really going to up nailing that because over these last couple days people have already dove to spider-man's game files and they discovered a couple things first off insomniac was actually planning a multiplayer mode for this game at some point no we don't really know at what point they scrapped it how deep in development or how they were trying to really implement it but they did discover some in-game dialogue referring to superior spider-man whether that be peter parker or miles morales kind of implicating that you and another person were essentially going to be competing to see probably who can stop crimes that fastest who can take out the most enemies the quickest or incorporate the highest combo meter considering how miles gets his powers at the end of the game and how he shows peter at the end of the game and then we have miles morales taking place after the events of spider-man i would assume that this whole multiplayer concept was developed and ultimately scrapped very early in spider-man's development but it's a cool little insight as to how they could potentially deliver on a multiplayer game mode in spider-man 2 next year if they decide to revisit that idea the other big thing is we got great news for PC players. Earlier at the beginning of the year, Sony's made it very clear that they want to bring more of their exclusives onto the PC platform, and that by 2025, they hope to have half their catalog on PC and mobile. And it appears inside the Spider-Man game files, it's been discovered that potentially Sony could be developing their own PC launcher with PSN integration essentially meaning that you can earn trophies on PC. I, I'm assuming that you'll probably end up sharing your profile from PlayStation over to PC if you got both platforms, which would probably also mean that you can message players on your friends list on PlayStation through this app as well as hopefully join a party, making it a little easier to play and hopefully that would also mean that they're more willing to have cross-play in the future considering in the past Sony has not had exactly the best track record when it came to being a team player when it came to cross-play in other games in the past. As far as I see it, this is both good and bad news. It's bad news because you're going to have potentially another launcher on your desktop. It could also mean that Sony may fall into the pitfalls of Rockstar's shitty launcher where even if you're playing a single player game, for some reason you need to have that internet connection active. I really hope that's not the case. 
But it's good, because then that would mean that Sony is fully committed to what they said at the beginning of the year, bringing more of their games onto PC. Where does that put PS now? I think that'll put it in a very interesting position, considering I'm sure a lot of people would be more than willing to pay for a PC port of the infamous games, the older Ratchet and Clanks, or even the older God of War games. I doubt Sony would be willing to put forward that amount of resources and money in older games on a platform that essentially isn't theirs, but if they were to deliver any type of remake, or even if they did have this PC launcher, this would mean in the future going forward, PC players wouldn't have to wait four plus years in order to see those games on their platform of choice. Hell, even a month after the initial release, I think would be more than acceptable. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you're a PC player, I'm sure hearing a PlayStation launcher doesn't sound all that exciting, but if Sony came out and said that if enough players downloaded this PC launcher and they started to see enough sales through this launcher, then they would expedite games being ported over to PC so you wouldn't have to wait three plus years and you can see it as soon as a couple weeks after the PlayStation 5's launch. Would that sweeten the deal a little bit for you? Would that make it easier for you to download this launcher and support Sony that way? Or do you think this launcher would just be a complete BS move for them to try and capitalize more on the profits of the games that they're putting on this platform and not have to split it so much with Steam. I'm genuinely curious. But like always guys, my name is Cynic. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting in the smallest bit. If you have any questions about Spider-Man or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below. But until next time, I'll see y'all later.